This video is going to show you how I film overhead bird's eye view videos for my tutorials. If that's something you seem interested in, then keep on watching this video. Okay, all right. Hello, my name is Juliette Uzel of SoSoNatural.com. I create content around creating clothes owning your style and showcasing them for everyone to see and you are absolutely welcome do take a moment to subscribe to my channel i would really appreciate that so when i decided to start sharing sewing tutorials my first few videos were a bit below par because i just did not know which equipment i needed my videos were mainly using my classic tripod so what I'll do is I'll tilt my tripod all the way down so you could see the so you know so the the lens were facing down but they weren't facing exactly down because they were at an angle and when they're at an angle you cannot see the full scale of a, a sewing pattern or of a tra pair of trousers or skirts um, bearing in mind that sewing projects are large they're for, for the human body so they're normally bigger the tripod was not what I needed <laughs> Also, when I managed to tilt my tripod all the way down, the front leg of the tripod would show. But then if I want my, when I wanted my tripod to face down without the legs showing, um, it would kind of, um, the weight of the camera would push it down. And that was, not, that was just not good for my camera. So um, I had to um, think. <laughs> so I started off with a short, a short bar that I found on, Amazon got what got it somehow installed it but it was just too short and I had to lean right into my table to be able to um, film whatever tutorials it was I wanted to share until I was able to find the correct equipment that I needed now this was this one I have now is by Muir it came along with two mounts but I just needed one of the mounts so but then I've got mine leaning across in an L shape but some people might want theirs in a U shape so it comes with those two mounts if a person wants you know to do that they can otherwise it can keep the other one for whatever it is but um, I'll put the link in the description below so how I've set this up is I have attached the bar that came along with it I've attached it to the mount and screwed it onto one of my tripod legs so I've got a, a long tripod that was that's actually one of my husband's my husband's photography equipment it comes along with this mount then i put the long mount through this hole it comes all the way out to form an l shape and i screw my camera it's that easy and that's where my camera goes to enable me to get that top down view having a look at my setup you would notice that the pole is sandwiched between my table and my shelves this really does help to make sure that there isn't any form of damage caused to the camera if your setup isn't like this make sure you counter the weight of your camera using some sandbags or any sort of heavy weights so you you need to um, attach that to your pole so it counters the weight of your camera I also have a little gap between my pole and my table or whatever surface I'm working on. This would avoid any form of shake that could ruin my footage whilst I'm editing because it can be quite tricky stabilizing a shaky footage. Um, I've got a few lights that I use but I've found that if you have a room with white walls or you know bright walls, having lights facing down at your project actually doesn't do the job very well it's better to have the lights pointing upwards at the walls and then the light bounces off from the walls onto your project it also avoids you from getting the glare that you get when your lights um when your light hits the sewing machine you know the sewing machines are shiny you just get that reflection of the light on your machines or anything that has a shiny surface it's better to point your lights at your bright walls and they bounce light onto your project. It's also worth turning up the exposure, um, help, that helps brighten up your projects as well. It's worth looking into that part of your um, project. If you are filming with your camp, with your, if you are filming with your smartphone, 
Remember to turn up the exposure on the camera. When you turn up the exposure on your camera, you need to make sure that you lock it down so that the exposure doesn't, so it doesn't, the lighting doesn't go up or down. Because remember, when your camera is facing, like when it's top down, when it's that way, the screen faces upwards and you can't really see what you're doing unless you are filming with the selfie camera, which I do not advise because that doesn't give you a very good film quality. So it's worth looking into that. When you film a top down view, a bird's eye view, you can't see, you can't really see the monitor of your camera, especially if your camera doesn't have a flip out screen. So if your camera has a flip out screen, that's excellent. Just make sure you can see it. Most cameras these days um, do have apps that sync onto your, um, sync your camera to your phone. So you can see exactly what you're doing and you can tell if you are within the range that your camera can pick. A little tip for you if you film top down videos, if you film bird's eye videos, my tip for you is mark out the perimeter of the, the space that your camera can capture because you do not want to film a whole video only to realize that half of your projects were out of shot. So use some cellar tape to do that because the last thing you want to do is finish filming a whole project, making something only to realize that half of what you created were out of shot. And I, I mean, what's the point in making something that people can't see? So that's another good tip for you. It's also worth mentioning that in post-production, whilst you're editing your footage, you need to flip around the footage at 180 degrees so that it will be easier for your viewer to um, enjoy your content. Those are my key pointers. I had to, um, I've had to find out the hard way and I thought I'll share that with you to make sure your journey is much more um, swifter. <laughs> If you do film bird's eye view videos, do let me know in the comments section if there are any other tips that you would like for myself or everybody else to know. Any other tips, tricks that you use that I haven't mentioned, we would really love to know that. And if you would like to create these sorts of videos, let me know in the comment section so um, you know I can watch out for your own videos as well. Um, I hope you liked this video. If you would like a more in-depth video, do let me know in the comment section and I will try my best to do a more vlog style in-depth video where you can see it in action. But um, that's all from me today. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and um, take care. Goodbye.